everybody say it mean? Who's that out there living the dream? Let's blow in the beam. Who's that still smoking all that green? Let's blow in the beam. Come on, y'all, let me hear you scream. Let's blow in the beam. Let's blow in the beam. Let's blow in the beam. Go. Let's blow in the beam. Welcome back. Here we are with the Twitter pop. Twitter pop. Pop pop. So there is um, some stuff going on this week in uh, UFC. I figured we could talk about some of the new matches signed. Uh, the most interesting thing by far to me is, did you hear anything about the Tom Lawler, Robbie Lawler mix-up? I did see that. I believe last night or the night before, and that is... Crazy. I, it tells us a lot. I thought it like an investigative piece all of a sudden. I was like, ooh, so USADA can't find Robbie Lawler. One. On the ranking list. Yes. He's still on the ranking list. We When was the last time, Amy? It's been a while since Robbie. We've been Thompson, talking how many times is... No, wait. Who beat him last? Who Woodley. How many times? He's Woodley's avoiding defended. USADA. Mm -hmm. Now what it also tells us. Tom pops. Tom says he didn't do anything wrong and he contests the pop. Uh-huh. And so now it's something... You got Tom Lawler and Robbie Lawler mixed up in the UFC. How many fighters does USADA deal with? So how likely is it? it? It just puts a case up for every single fighter that's ever said this is bullshit. How do you, I even know you were testing my pee? And then you're going to these fighters. Some of them, you know, you're waking up at 630. You're going to their house at 11 p.m. And you have all these random people running around taking, you know, samples of all these. And mm -hmm. any one of the samples that they take, if it pops on you, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. So they have to keep all those samples straight of all those people for all the time. And then they keep the test for however long so mm -hmm. they can go back later. If So I'm supposed to trust now that three years from now, USADA test is... the right is, name it's really on the mine. right canister. Yeah. So three years if I put, get popped on something, they try to take my title away. So with human error, I would say that I could see where this happens. I wouldn't expect it to happen. I can see and expecting are two different things. And... The fact that they're making themselves or trying to make themselves the most credible organization and stuff like this happens and somebody's job might have been at stake such as Tom Lawler because now we have to take into consideration that he could have never, it could have been Robbie and they were just mixing up the addresses or whatever it was. Um... And it makes sense. It does. It does. It does. And I think that... There's always going to be bumps. There's going to be hiccups in any company, any business you run. It's They got to get through. They got to redeem themselves somehow. How would you sort of redeem themselves from this situation? They have to come out with a press mm -hmm. statement saying that we know Tom Lawler, this, that, and the other. I feel like Tom Lawler's already moved on because he's talked about it. And he's like, I can't afford to fight USADA. So I'm just going to become a professional wrestler instead of an MMA fighter. And you and can't afford it. And this is the worst thing. This is the worst, the worst part of getting popped to me, would not be my reputation. Because I know for a lot of people it would be. They'd be like, no, I've been a clean fighter my whole life. I want people to know I'm clean. But for me, <laughs> it well, yeah, some of them. Some yeah. of them don't give a shit. Um, but for me, the it's whatever amount of time that USADA tries to F around, whatever amount of time, your career as a fighter is so short. Yep. You cannot be... There has to be some kind of... Retribution. Yeah, yes. There yeah, has to be some agree. sort of... I would agree. Totally. Uh, I feel like you could have a case because it's money that literally is out of Tom and Waller's USADA? pocket. And who's USADA? Again, the... Here's some questions question. I have. Who's USADA? Do all the people that work for USADA have to be drug tested? And how often do they get drug tested? Do they have people stand there while they drug test? Because if you're in control of handling something as vital as this, I want to know you're 100% sober yourself. So I feel like, is this same stipulation going on for their employees? <laughs> Great questions. <laughs> I will have to research this some more. I feel like there's, <laughs> there's got to be standards. Of questions. There's got to be checks and balances. And we got to have a coming to Jesus moment. <laughs> for people got to get their shit together. Because we're playing with people's lives. And these are people that we admire. And the last thing I want to see is someone not be able to compete in the prime of their career. Because someone who's trying to be noble can't get their shit together. You should be on top of it. Um, speaking of pop this fighters. This is not... Uh, the same way in a fight, there's no room for error. Agree. Yeah, I do agree the with that. The same exact way. I the, agree. the precision of that, whatever it is they're doing, no room for and error. as anal as they've been already as far as fighters being like, no, Chael Sonnen has some really good stories saying like, you don't understand, once they found, saw me, they couldn't leave my side. 
Like, they were in every room, and they're like, sorry, until you pee, I can't leave your side. And this was, like, Brazil, and they go to Nebraska, and all over, and, like, they are adamant about waking... I mean, Demetrius Johnson was doing a twitch, and they're like, no, 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 you need to stop your feet. We need to go pee, and he's like, all right, cool, whatever, but they don't give a shit. No. They, yeah, house. yeah, and they pride themselves on that. Well, pride yourself on being fucking good they're at your job. They're a parole job. officer. Yeah, You have yes. to tell them where you're yes. going to be. I know. Which I is kind of creepy. I, wouldn't, I think on that note alone, I don't know if I'd want to be in the UFC. I mean, of course I'd take a fight in the UFC, but if it was like, I got to be calling someone outside of my boss yeah, to just take my in. pee. No, fuck off. I'll go pee right before I fight. Yeah, Get or the they, fuck maybe out they of should here. have clinics or something where like, can I just drive to a legitimate facility Yeah, right well, now? Uh, Quest Diagnostics or whatever like, the hell Can I go I to the jail and have somebody <laughs> watch me? Like... Uh, and how invasive, like, they have to watch you. Yes, 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 yes. So it's like, woo. But I do see the for the I randomness. I know, I want it to all be safe, and I want them to, I understand the randomness factor of it. I totally get all of that. I just feel like this is, a, that part, it's, you have to be so precise. And if you're going to be the one that we hold to the highest standard, and we talk shit about Brazil, and people getting away with shit, and whatever, <laughs> it's almost like I'd rather a fighter at least be able to fight than have his career ruined by a fake te- or a test that wasn't his. Speaking of Brazilian fighters, actually a fighter who was just given a two-year suspension for popping um, is Visakari Andrade. He, I don't know exactly what steroid he was on, but hey, Brazil, have we been speculating here at Les Bonne that Brazilians are known to be, and, and this isn't just us, you talk to any of the m- martial arts community and they know that Brazil's come out of there. So all this doping stuff isn't even close to being over. We're going to get a whole lot more pop still coming because of the dick pills. And or let's say that there's just a natural uh, whey protein that is mixed after a batch of steroids and they didn't clean the parts well enough. There can be trace amounts that will cause people to pop. And they've traced that back in Olympics. I feel like Joe had a really big talk about it back in the day when he had Dirk Nowinski in there talking about it. And he said that they do rectify. I'm thinking off the top of my head that they do try to rectify situations, but like their really high rate of success of having everything go through. And apparently this is not one of those <laughs> high rated success times. Robbie and Tom Lawler's potential name mix up. It's a big deal. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of a big deal. And like, people aren't making as big of a deal as they should I be. I mixed up Matt Brown and Travis Brown when I first started watching. <laughs> but I never mixed up Robbie and Tom. <laughs> so, And I think their last names aren't even spelled the same. I think you might be right on that. I don't know. I feel like there's like a Y in one and the other one's like L-A-W and the other one's like Lawler. <laughs> you know? <It's> like <laughs> Lawler. Anyway... So back to the Twitterverse, any other specific Twitters? Um, I thought an interesting one, speaking of uh, popping, uh, Chael and everything going on. Have you heard anything about the Bellator's pay-per-view? I have only heard speculations of that they got it booked. Um, I don't know if there's been an official announcement out yet, announcement out yet unless it's like breaking Did as Did you hear of any of the fights that were on it? No, yeah, I oh, haven't. Oh, yeah, um... Now I have to remember all these fights. Because <laughs> it's Bellator, so it's completely different fighters. Um, who did Chael do the Tough House with, against? Ben Lee Silva. I think them. Yeah, Wanderley. They're yeah, that's the fight. fighting. Yeah, that's and, the main well, event. And I don't know if it's the main because also um, Bader oh, okay. just signed to fight. Who's the guy that I said I really like that was just on the Big Brown Breakdown? From Bellator, black guy, handsome, he looks like a good Phil looking... Phil Davis? Phil Davis. Phil Davis used to be in the UFC. Oh, Phil Davis So that's going to be a UFC, too. essentially... Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was going to say, I thought they that, fought and, and Davis out-wrestled uh, Bader. Hmm. I feel like there was something else on it. I know so little about Bellator. But I was actually <laughs> looking at this card, and there's so many fighters I know on this card. Bellator that I'm like, in this card? I might be willing to jump in this card. Like, this might be the card I Bellator. I keep that's, saying it, but I haven't yet. that's what Bellator is wanting. That's why they've been filling every... Uh, what's happening right now in this... It, we're talking about the whole MMA spectrum. And with Joseph Duffy, what just happened, interestingly, about his last fight in the UFC is that his contract was up. So now he's able to test the waters. And he was just giving an interview talking about how he... Um, 
is able to have a little more leverage as far as for him. He might get paid more. Um, he has better shot at type titles and it's an easier fight for him and I think that any fighter especially in the age range I think Joe Duffy's in his mid 30s um you got to make it and everybody says that you it's not a long time that you're in this sport you got to make the most out of it while you can and Bellator is looking for exactly that Joe Duffy range where Joe Duffy isn't going to be the champ anytime soon he's got nine fights before he gets there where at Bellator he's got three fights and he's fighting for the championship with pay-per-view points and getting fatter paychecks prior to that with easier fights. Who isn't logically going to take that? Um, I see a lot of Lorenz Larkins also recently signed with Bellator. And he was actually having statements saying that it was really due to a, a respect thing. That UFC uh, was just kind of not give, giving him the treating him like a little kid. And not giving him the respect that he deserved. And I've heard that before from other fighters. And... Lorenz Larkins is an elite athlete, but I love Lorenz Larkin. He's not flashy. He they haven't got behind him because he has been beat against Emilio really good wrestlers. Mich- Matt Mitrione is the other fight. Oh, that the, they're them. rematching that with Sonin Wanderley Silva. Um, I think these are the three the actual fights. fights. I'm trying to figure out what fight card it is. Is that it? it yeah, I did hear Mitrione Fedor for the Madison was booked Square Garden two. card. Ooh, yeah, I would watch that all day. I would have watched that anyways. Yeah, but, and Ryan Bader, I watched fun. him in an interview, and he is like, my mind's the sharpest it's ever been. My body feels better than it's ever have. I have no injuries. Uh-huh. Like, he's stoked about his contract. Like, everything because seems... Because they're paying... And that Bader's... So, Bader and Joseph Duffy are in that same I situation. I like Bader. I like Bader. Yeah. he. Did you ever watch him on the show? He, no. he almost lost his job. He won the He's, Tough House. Yeah. But then he won the Tough House and then went on a drinking rampage and kicked out a limousine window. I've seen window. those sketches. Yeah. I've seen our sketches. I've seen them on clips the on YouTube. The clips. And Dana White made Ryan Bader cry so much. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. So this might be the card. Yeah. I'll, I'm, I'm definitely going to be watching. Just speaking of Dana White, another thing that kind of a good segue into it. Um... Nick Diaz, have you seen what he he's really pissed? Because I guess Dana has, like, I've offered the Diaz brothers so many fights. Uh-huh. And Nick's like, he's offered me one fight. Why does why can't he keep my fucking name out of his mouth? Or, like, yeah, don't talk stop, about me. Yeah, stop fucking talking. He yeah. got fucking he's pissed. He's street. Diaz is street. Diaz's brothers are street where they don't like that type of shit. They don't understand. Not maybe they do understand the promotional shit, but they just refuse to live by those rules. They're just like, no, 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 we're just playing by street rules, and I feel like the world adjusts to them, and they don't adjust to the world as well, and that's what makes them intriguing as well. I know, it's so interesting. They're... I I just, I think it's kind of, he's almost like a manager from WWE, or something. Yes, like, that's, that's exactly like, what he is. He has like this that's whole... exactly what he yeah, is. Yeah, he's like playing a part. So he says, fuck you, Dana White, for making up lies about him. The Diaz brothers wear their heart on their sleeve, and that's why we love them as well. That's why they are intriguing. That's why they're going to be legends is because, like you or not, they're going to let you know, and they're going to be real with you, and all you got to do is be real with them. That's all they ask. They just hate all the fakeness. That's all they ever say. They don't ever sway away from it. They got to say, everyone's on steroids. Stop lying. And then everyone else, shut the fuck up because and you're all lying And when they said too. it, now look what's happened since they said that. A hundred percent right. He was saying 100% everybody, uh, Nick was saying, back when he had his two-year suspension for marijuana, he's just like, they're giving me two years, 100% of these motherfuckers other than me and my brother are on it. Guess what, Gil Melendez, your homeboy popped. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love sure. you, Gil. I love you, Gil. He's never been the same. It's age with Gil. And Gil, it, Gil just came around a little too late. For who is, it might be Chael that talks about the mental crutch of steroids. More so, like, um, just as much. It, it might have been him that I heard of recently. Chael, no, because he's a fucking cheater. And that motherfucker's pop for everything. He throws it's Dan fights. Gable. If the, if you've heard stuff, it's usually the wrestling coach who, and Rogan and other people will always quote it, where they will say that it's a mental crutch because once they're off of it, they're not going to be as good as they ever were when you're always going to be able to beat them because they know that they need supplementation. It's all Dan Gable stuff. Great books. If you want to get into the mind of an athlete, Dan Gable is quality, quality. Is he? I think he's a head coach for 
Iowa State still. Um, I totally could be wrong on that. But Dan Gable, a legend as far as the wrestling scene. That's where that quote's from. Um, other Twitter verse stuff. Entwistle retired after that. I guess is in Twitter, but Entwistle did retire after not making weight. Guess what, Ian Entwistle? You can move up. You can fight at 170. <sighs> Why are you retiring? I just feel like, you know who? what we don't need? Any more 155ers in the UFC. <laughs> it's the most stacked division. <laughs> like, we don't need any. There is so much interest, too, in every yes. f- fight they make. It's like, you, there are so many other divisions for the UFC to be investing in. And so, as a fighter, it's like you already work at a place and you want to get a j- different job in the company you already work for. Dude, okay. just move up. Try one fight. Yep. Maybe he doesn't want, you know, try one fight bigger. And he's a tall, skinny guy. It's crazy. But it is one of but those things. maybe he's things. done. Some people aren't, they don't have a fight in heart. Somebody's sketching me out because of how much they keep talking about retiring. And I'm like, I got to remember that. I got to put that in my head. I don't like all that it talk. Was, we talked about it, I feel like, on the post-fight show. It was Scott. Brad Scott. Yeah, I don't like it. No, no, no. I agree. Why I can't, you? I'm not going to put him on a card after that because, sorry, dude. It's just, that's what you should do from yourself. Is take that and say, thanks for the win, I'm out. I'm leaving on the top. Why are you giving yourself of leaving on the bottom with a loss? Leave when you just won a fight if you were even contemplating retiring before this last fight. Or make weight once to win. Like, just, like, yeah. you're going to go out your last fight because you didn't. Missed weight. Yeah. Ah, it's rough. I mean, everybody's different yeah. and there could be other I shit going like on. I feel like Kevin Gastelum, it, Kelvin, is... Proof. Uh, proof. Like, you go up if you have the right Whit- skills. It's uh, but you know Whitaker what? as well. And this is what I'll also say. And this is where it takes a guy to throw his weight around that for a guy like Entwistle, let's say, uh-huh. a guy like Khabib could make the 160 division. I saw these amazing yeah. ratings. I retweeted them. Uh-huh. Um, but they were just, if somebody redid the weight classes in the UFC and put every a champion of each weight class and yeah, kind yeah. of broke it all down and it was like yeah that's right yeah. like that's how it should be it was like pretty much 10 pounds between it used to be is it that they don't think that the fans are going to be able to keep up with that amount of divisions because i will fucking try and i guarantee you i'll be able to keep it won't be as in depth but you'll be able to open your company just you'll get so much bigger boxing did it they started having champions at every five pounds not to say that we have to keep following the boxing model but there is room for weight classes in the UFC. A lot of wiggle room. It's definitely a hot topic for us here at Lesbo and the Bean. Follow us on Twitter. It, at Lesbo and the Bean. It's always uh, going to be a factor. Always, always. Weight cutting is just... Yeah, even fighting. if they move 10 weight classes around, people are still going to... It doesn't matter. People are going to always have that mentality and... You can't change your minds. Everyone has their own reasons to do what they do. Also on the Twitterverse, this was just a former UFC um, dirtbag we're going to kind of highlight here. War Machine. I don't even know I have his first that name. on my list too. Oh, War Machine. I wow, mean, I look... <laughs> wow. He was put up for 36 counts, I believe, of... Uh, I think it was 36, charges. and I think he got 25 29, 29, 29 of the 29 36. of the accounts, but these are felonies, and it, go, it stems Crazy. from sexual assault, battery, kidnapping, and this isn't just towards one person. This is towards her and the and dude that he beat the living shit out of. stuff, too. Like, um, he was leg-kicking her in the leg. He and, punctured her lung. Um, like, hurting with for threats of sex. Like, uh-huh. it was like... Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't, like, I didn't go into it because... Of, of, like, oh, yeah, I was reading. He was... It sounds awful. But he was holding, like, knives that were thrown on top of being able to beat the living shit out of... What guy, though? I mean, I know this other guy that was sleeping with her was another porn star, but that's War Machine's ex-girlfriend, and you know that guy's mentally unstable. I would have not gone over to her house because that dude could have died. War Machine could have killed him. He With did his bare hands. He could have killed him. He just beat the living shit out of the dude naked for hours. It was how, but it was hours, like eight hours. Something he held him. Horrible. He yeah. It wasn't it was just a like horrible story. Yeah, it was not a quick bam, knock the dude out how and punch him in get? the face. The key, I I don't know exactly how long he got. I wasn't able to look that up in time. Um, but I do know that he was given two plea deals that he turned down. One for. Potential 14 years to life, the other one for 16 to life. So those are the plea deals he's getting. 14 to life and 16 to life. He, he got charged with 20. He's on the street. He's, he's dangerous. He's but done. Do you think this could be um, traumatic brain injury? 
he also came in with a very checkered press. He came in through the show, The Ultimate Fighter, and he, on the show, they highlighted it, and even in Bellator, they highlighted it multiple times, and it's really horrible that they kept highlighting it, but it's his father dying in his arms, his dad having mass cardiac arrest, and him holding him and calling... And he cries every time he tells that story. And they always ask him to tell that fucking story. Yeah, it's horrible. Horrible. And he says that that's why he even fights and whatever. Like, that was a pivotal moment. But he also says that a lot of his issues come from that happening to him. When he, I think he was like 10 or 13 years old when that happened. And it just said, he said it set his path into a bad way. And fighting got him out of that. But, I mean, he's... It's it's a rough life. He had a rough card and he could have went many, many ways. He got to the highest levels of a promotion where Bellator was paying him fairly good money. He wasn't going to be in the UFC, but he was making a living and he could just, couldn't just could keep his nose clean. He, he just always found a way for trouble. He started getting into porn with Christy Mack where he was doing a lot of like vining and all of that when that was big for a hot minute. Um, he was doing a lot of that and it's just... The te- the weave would of web that this shit gets into. Name yourself War Machine, it'll follow you. He has a grenade on his hand as well, tattooed, because I he feel like he knocks people out with it, <laughs> and uh, he did. Christina he, Mac. <laughs> uh, have you seen the photos of her in the hospital? Yes, it's horrible. Oh. oh. She looks like he somebody didn't do unboxed. that kind of damage to anyone, or maybe not any, because he beat the shit out of a couple guys in the ring, but yeah. <laughs> Poor lady. Poor, it's poor lady. It's horrible. But I feel like it a dirtbag okay. like that and he has two all of things it. that are going to go against him. One. Or three. Uh-huh. So he beats a lady, mm-hmm. which that ain't going to go good in prison. Yep. He beats a lady that was a porn star. Mm-hmm. That is double not going to go good in prison because all of them probably know who Fans. she is. Yeah. They all probably know who she is and guys get weird about their porn stars where they're like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. my girl. Um, the third thing is he's a fighter and a tough guy uh-huh. so what better way to feel like you're a badass in prison so is their funny thing with this when he was initially getting into other trouble um after coming off of the show and not winning the ufc show he got local celebrity in his uh local town but he was still fighting and getting into bar fights he got put up drunk a couple nights um but he got into some kind of trouble for a couple months where he went to prison for a little bit and he was, he had his lawyer just being like, I don't care if you guys put me in danger. Just let me out of solitary confinement. He went right into segregation as soon as he got there because all the cops said, you're a celebrity. We don't want to deal with your ass. Put him in the hole. You can do your six months in the hole. And he's just like, I don't deserve this. Put me with reg- regular population. So that's shit's going to happen again where they're going to yeah. say, hey, this motherfucker's a celebrity. He has all the other ties with the Christy Mac." There's fucking bounties. Dude, you're going to be in the hole. You're fucking whole rest of your... Like, he's looking at a really bleak outlook, and he did it to himself. He That's deserves part. every He did it to himself. It. I can't... I don't feel bad for him. But then you have a guy like this, and we have innocent people that... Um, why don't you take a guy like this and be like, all right, you... Like, running man style. Like, something that we need done, and be like, well, it's up to you. Some dangerous, life-threatening mission. Like, we want to see if this satellite will really go all is the way around. Is there a movie about to come out like that? Running Man. That's what oh, I there, Is of. it a remake of Running Man? Oh, I don't know. No, I think I saw a trailer for something um, that's about to be like, you can win your freedom back. It's a, t- st- it's a tale of the times. It's been around for a hundred well, years. We keep going Stephen over Stephen King it. had a surname, or like his writing. He used to write under the Bachman books, or Richard Bachman. And so huh. there was a series of his short writings that came out called the Bachman books. And uh-huh. one of them was Running Man. Which oh. if you read the book, instead of taking place in an arena like the movie, uh-huh. it takes a place across the country. That'd be dope. And everyone, same way, like, we're connected now and that everyone can call in and say, i seen him. And do everything that you see that happens in the arena, it happens like that, but across the country where there's bounty hunters looking for him, where there's, and the bounty hunters get bonuses if they take care of him. And then they say, you can win your freedom, but really all the guys are dead. And right. it's all computer CGI. But Wasn't the body in that, Running Man? Wasn't he up on the fence, CGI'd or something? The body Ventura was oh, no, in no. the He was actually, yeah, he was in, in the movie. In right? the movie. That's what he, I'm sorry. He was, I was totally he was going a character in the movie that um, sees 
the fallacy in all of it. And he's like, this is horseshit. And, and he's then they like kill him guy. in the movie, too, I think. Um, like, he also realized it, and then they also... No, he... There is a guy that gets electrocuted in the fence, but that's not... Rick's no, he was, like, Jesse the body. stuck. Like, he was stuck on, like, spikes on a fence, I thought. And then the CGI came off of his face, and then it's like, what? That was actually... It might have not been the body. It might have been some other... No, it could have been him at the end of it. Yeah. I forget that... I just... Re- I Like, the whole scene comes down, and, like, the guy who played, um... He's like a Lex Luthor type character. I don't know. Richard Burton, I think is the actor's name. I t- might be totally wrong <laughs> on that. Um, but Arnold, the host of the game show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now if you think about everything that was in that. Uh-huh. Th- and so he wrote this book in mm-hmm. the, like probably the 60s or 70s. Mm. So this movie and now everything's come to play where they could take any video they wanted and make it look like you did something. Yeah. They could take your voice from everything that you've done and make it look like you said something. Uh-huh. And so now everything that I remember watching as a kid on that Running Man movie, I was like, holy shit, this is crazy. Oh, yeah. Like, that's all real. Yeah, I know. So that's, he, yeah, real So Stephen movie. King wrote this shit in the 60s or 70s. Another weird one that he yeah. wrote in that same series of books. Uh-huh. Um, I don't remember two two of them, but one of them in particular. That whole Mockingjay series uh-huh. all came from the long walk, pretty much. There's so much similarities with that. But anyways, uh-huh. um, he also did a whole thing about a school shooting. Interesting. And that is way before there was ever a school shooting, but about a kid that just gets picked on a little too much and he's like daydreaming in class. I don't know if he's daydreaming. That's the whole question. Or if he really takes out his whole class, but it's pretty much he holds his class hostage. Interesting. Yeah. And that's, so th- this guy's so on the shit. Could he, but could he also be held at trial for inciting violence in the world we live in today? If you were to put out that type of stuff, would it be inciting violence? Because they had a, uh, there was a movie, Rampage, where they were trying to get it snuffed because it was like a kid. It, I watched the movie Ultra Violence, literally Ultra Violence. It's a kid that set frames his other kid by shooting up a whole town essentially and just perfectly setting it up where he gets away with it, where he robs a bank and just rampages. The movie's called Rampage. If you watch it. Or like The Good Son. The Any- Good was dope. But anytime- that shit was so dope. <laughs> anytime there's one character that's like seedily doing something to another character that no one believes or they're, they're like, what? I didn't kill uh-huh. the dog. He killed the dog. But everyone thinks that you, those movies horrify me. Yeah. They're so real. Yes. The, that's is it such the hand a- that rocks a cradle? Yeah. That shit. It's the same shit, right? Yeah. That big old wet titty in that baby's mouth. You better that's get a- your titty out of my baby's mouth. But you know the <laughs> weird thing about that whole... Th- ladies used to just that was a normal thing that in a village like oh every, and nanny would breastfeed everybody everybody right? would breastfeed she would have like milk till she was 90 and she was everyone breast- would breastfeed everyone's kids like it wasn't a big deal you would yeah, just pop someone's human, baby right? off and you'd it's pop not it on like your titty cow, and- it's not like a animal to a human like a cow to a human because that is a little weirder than human to human if you really think about it yeah, but people, I mean, just the oddity, if somebody took your fucking baby and breastfed it, I don't even have a baby, I don't want a baby, but if somebody took mom's baby, if someone like, I don't even know, I don't like that, I'd be like... If somebody took my dog and did that, I'd be like, get your big titty on my dog. <laughs> I think we can leave that there. <laughs> So, let's see. Let's see if we can make a segue out of get your titty out of my dog's mouth. Um... Maybe. Have you seen Justin Bieber's new tattoo? No, I can't. No. Nope. So apparently like a few days ago, he followed Conor McGregor Oy. on Instagram. Okay. And then he got um, Son of God tattooed across his gut like Conor has McGregor in uh-huh. the exact same letters. Garbage. Garbage, garbage, gar- I mean, I don't care for the kid. I've never really cared for him, so... Don't get a he, M- McGregor tattoo. You walk with Floyd. Me. That's what I was about you to say. Isn't he part of the money team? Yeah, he totally is. Isn't he like, oh, I'm the money team. Me, yeah, me. he's like, I'm going to carry both belts into the ring. God. And the thing with Habib, though, is that McGregor being a, a real fighter is just probably like... Well, he's probably making money off of it, but I would want to punch Biebs, and you know you get sued... Like, he'd be there a little turd just like, ha-ha, hit me, go ahead. Because that's the world they live in now. 
You can't just fucking touch people anymore. He seems like the kind of prick, though, that you could push him to punch you and be, we don't want a chicken dinner. Yeah, all day. But you know what? He also seems like the kind of prick that probably has four bodyguards that would just mm. jump you. But remember when Beebs attacked, like, that one bodyguard not long ago? I saw it, it on... I was, yeah. Or a fist fight you, with somebody. Somebody, but you didn't hear shit about it. Why? Because that fat you got paid. I guarantee you he didn't go to court because Beebs was like, how much... How much? Unless it did They're come They're all up. probably abused. Yeah, oh they all God, probably just big, get paid to get punched. But those big motherfuckers? They're like, all right, jump at me. Yeah. Well, they're like, well, technically it's assault. And yes, oh. it did hurt. But you know that girlfriends be hitting them harder than that with them big old Hawaiian titties. That totally works there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see you back around. <laughs> Let's see. Um... Not Hawaiian, but somebody who always is confused for Hawaiian. Uh, Mark Hunt just signed that fight with Derek Lewis. Poor Mark Hunt. Why the hell are they... The UFC don't like him. No. Well, I mean, you could see why. He sued the shit out of him, and they settled out of court. I mean, if Look I were Mark Hunt... what they're doing to this guy. I would have said, thanks for the check. I'm retiring, guys. I'm out. Fuck this shit. He's, he seems like the dude out of principle. Fuck. He seems like a dude out of principle. And remember, like... Off of a loss. Not Dude, Lewis is off of a win. Not too long ago. That doesn't ago. happen. Doesn't make any sense. Oh my but God. they're fighting in New Zealand. He's going to get... But he can win that fight. If Mark, Mark Hunt can win a fight and Derek Lewis gets hurt to the body, he's got a big head. But he gets her to the body, and we just saw that. And Mark Hunt, even though he's it's old, it's gonna and be a stand and power, throw. Yeah, there's not gonna be any wrestling involved. It's too soon. My Mark Hunt just got knocked out. So how long until the next fight coming up for that? I don't know. Whenever UFC New Zealand is, so I imagine it to be like two thirteen <sighs> or two twelve. He was out cold. He was, and who I don't even remember his last fight now. Who I knees against Overeem. Overeem. That, the UFC's mad at you. Yes! Yes! They let over... Listen to this, too. And here's my other conspiracy on it. Uh-huh. Listen, IV. Alistair. Exactly! IV with the doctor. Yeah. Yes! Yeah, so we talked about we're it we're going to let show. you cleanse. Uh-huh. No, but the... Oh, sorry. The UFC has full arrangement with him with that ahead of time. There was never food poisoning. They arranged the whole thing ahead of they time for Alistair to be Alistair. And they were going to feed Mark Hunt to a beast because of that. They wanted to prove a yeah. point because fuck Mark yeah. Hunt. Yeah, and now they're going to throw him against Derek Lewis. And win or lose this yeah. fight, I have a... Uh-huh. They're going to throw him against Francis. Win or lose. after that. Yeah. I think they're, gonna, they're sending him through a he Game have, of Thrones. He does have a legendary status They're going to make him earn whatever amount of money dis- undisclosed mm-hmm. that we don't know about. And he makes 200000 a fight. They're going to make him earn that money. I would agree with that. But for two hundred k, would you be taking a knockout? Would you be like, fuck, I'm going to get knocked yeah, out how for three minutes? Eight? Would you take eight He's already been. Knockouts? He's been doing it. That's what I mean, He's though. been doing like, it for his whole much, life already. And he's been out cold. Melvin Mountain, who knocked him out back in Pride back in the day. Back in 2004 or whatever. It's just, ugh. Ah, he can't take much longer of this. Um, and to feed him to the beast. It's not like, yeah. okay, if we want to see, like, okay, not that... I, I can't even think of somebody in that weight class where I'm like, so this will be... Where I could see that they're building where... Isn't they're... Mark Hunt's Samoan? Or is no. he from Ke- Kiwi. Not New He's Zealand? Kiwi. We... And then this is the other thing that I think is so... Not only that. Here's the other conspiracy to compile on it. They freaking sign a New Zealand card. Mm-hmm. Because they're going to use that bitch's name to make way more money yes, than they ever that's got. What I was and the say. only way they could make the money yeah. back from Mark Hunt, not that Mark Hunt's not a name, he's good on any card. He's yep. obviously a UFC name. But to make the real money back from him, you got to put a card in, in New Zealand. Zealand. Uh, and yeah. then we're going to put him in New Zealand and we're going to let him get whooped by fucking the beast in front of his hometown. Like, they are, this is, this is. Dark. <laughs> you poor and there's too many man. additions. Poor there's too many additions to this. Yeah. And they found every loophole so they could get away with feeding another beast to Mark Hunt. And who was the beast he had before that? Oh, Brock Lesnar. What yeah. did Mark who did Mark Hunt piss off? <laughs> well, all the suing stuff came after the Brock fight. Yeah, but what happened but before, before then? That? This has been a building. You don't, the you, thing with yeah. Mark Hunt that I do see that and what I was going to get back to is they can make a name because he is in New Zealand and his legend supersedes him. So people will come because it's him and it might be one of the last times you see him fight. So they can build Derek. They say Derek Lewis also be an elite striker. He is an elite striker. He's just not in his prime anymore. Um, 
they could do that for Nagano as well, and they use him as a stepping stone. They use his years of experience, and they can use New footage fans for hours. Beast. Yeah, Everyone exactly. Everyone in New Zealand loves Derek now. Yeah. Like, tune in. He for just me. has to play it classy with Mark Hunt, but Mark Hunt. Oh, I hope Mark. Hunt. This is what my dream is for Mark Hunt. He wins this fight. That would be so dope. And retires on his shield in New Zealand and walks out on top. This could be his retirement fight in New Zealand. That's a no, good point. let me add to this conspiracy. Uh-huh. Because I remember way back when, right before the UFC I sold, we contract. talked about... This is before we even had the podcast, right? Before the UFC sold. We had... Yeah. We had talked... Isn't this weird how the UFC is signing certain fighters to these really like long eight or fight 11. deals? It was eight or 11, And all yeah. the fighters they were signing were all past their prime old motherfuckers yeah. that didn't need like, to be fighting why? eight more fights. Yeah. And now, look at it play out. <sighs> They're the only ones wrapped into contracts with this company. Every other fighter gets to be free agent after two or three. And these guys mm-hmm. are locked in to the shit money with Reebok. They can't go free agency because yep. so many other fights are there. And back when they signed, well, the one thing for Mark Hunt, though, he's probably making a significant amount of purse. He is probably making 200, 200 or something kooky. It's probably 100, 100. I, think I don't know it was what the like cap 250. is. I think it was like 200. Oh, that, I don't know if there is a cap. I don't know if there is, but he's making a to- uh, definitely a good wages. He's getting at least 250K. I, I believe that's what I've seen a few fights ago against, like, Brock. And it doesn't really go down. Like, once you start to get to those levels, it doesn't really go down. May, maybe 25 grand here and there, but not, Maybe like this hundreds. is a deal that we don't know about that's part of... Or, okay, let's, let me make it a good conspiracy. Part of Mark's signing deal uh-huh. with them for whatever amount of undisclosed money that he got is that his last fight would be get to be in New Zealand. That would be dope. Wouldn't I mean, that be a little cooler of a romantic you, to the story? Can you break a contract with a retirement? Like, that's the only way you can? Yeah, that's the only it's way. It's the only way, but you have to retire. Yeah, uh-huh. and then you can't fight for other organizations. Or the, exactly, real. exactly, exactly. And that's the problem that other people But the cool thing that Mark Hunt could do, mm-hmm. he could go to WWE because he has it's a storyline with Brock. If he wants to, but it, I don't know if he's a wrestling guy. I know he doesn't seem like he's yeah. he's no bullshit. Yeah, I agree. He would, never he would really that. punch one of those guys, one of the whatever they are. Oh my gosh, I heard the funniest them. shit. Yeah. Um, I have to give credit. I think it was um, who's the who does unfiltered that we like? Who's the one guy on Norton and Sarah? Jim Norton? Jim Norton's Comedy Hour. <laughs> he's like, did you guys see that? You know, he talks about like how Hulk Hogan pretty much did more for celebrities with that getting suing Gawker and that privacy for oh, celebrities than anyone else. Yeah, and that's it makes like, other people take a, a hero. Think. He's an American hero, and he was saying that, and he goes, "But did anyone see the size of Hogan's hog?" He's like, <laughs> "It made me realize why that goofy ass leg drop he used to always do." <laughs> Our people. <laughs> he's like, it was, I don't even remember the right word, but he's uh-huh. like, it was like you're bringing down a baseball bat on someone's <laughs> like, but it was really fucking funny. Uh-huh. Um, but I was just like, I did not see that. Usually, I don't really look up anything that any celebrity it gets released without their oh their sex tape. Yeah, like uh-huh. I don't, or I, don't, I watch Reggie and Kim. I'm just saying, I watch Reggie and Kim. If they if the celebrity ends up making money on it, uh-huh. I'll find I'll sit with my uh-huh. girlfriends and we'll be like oh and we won't watch the whole thing but uh-huh. we'll like or the highlights I just study it as well it's but like if it's like the Jennifer me. Lawrence or like somebody where they're oh, getting leaked uh-huh. I try not uh-huh. to look up their shit I, I never seen I, a picture I, of Jennifer Lawrence naked I I, it. but if she wants me to see her naked <laughs> I'm not opposed <laughs> just let me know girl we know you're listening just tell me <laughs> just you know that the thing me. you do just wink in a movie <laughs> um, let's see what else is going on. So that's Mark Hunt and Derek Lewis. You got anything? Oh, you were talking about Felder. Felder versus, um, who's the new, uh, Dieski, the Bone Crusher. Yeah. That is a really fun striking bout. Up. That, they've been exchanging Twitter barbs back and forth, and I feel like I took that exact line off of, so, like, an MMA junkie thing. So, they're exchanging words on Twitter for sure, and... I like that as a striking battle. The I haven't seen takedowns for many of them. Felder has gotten a couple people down to the ground and held them there, but they both want to stand and bang. That's their I style. I like this fight, but the only question I have is, Felder a guy that kind of, is he higher ranked for yes, sure? Yes, and guaranteed. Should he be maybe fighting up at this point? 
this is a very tricky fight for Felder. I like Felder. He has no name. I don't know if this makes it bigger or not. It could because if they put on a good enough of a show, they'll turn into a... Cub came in, but Choi turned into a superstar or into a high-rising star after that fight of the year. The fact that these guys fight the way they do, I feel like they both can come out on top. Felder has more to lose. I would agree what with that. What weight class is uh, Daya Eski? I Daya think it's 155. Daya Kessi, uh, 155. 155? Ferguson. You know, not 145? Might be 145. I think it might be yeah, 145. He's little. Yeah, it might be 145. I'm going to um, look up everything, but I want to look I up think, that. I uh, that Felder has played around with 145, 150. Five as well, I think he's gone back and forth, and it's just the dynamic of the traditional Muay Thai from Felder with a good takedown defense, and then this flashy, ultra fast style of Taekwondo. Uh, any Taekwondo star is fun in the UFC. You can see it through Anthony Pettis, who got on the Wheaties box and who really used the good takedown defense in Taekwondo to get flashy wins and or just win decisions very flashy. But once people really started to figure out that Taekwondo style, they were really able to start to shut down Pettis. And he slowly evolved. His little brother's actually come a long way. Um, Dayeski, this is that test of if he's just going to be a Taekwondo guy or MMA. And the hard thing was that we didn't see much of him in this fight. It was so quick that... We didn't see him really defend too many takedowns. They were charged that bad takedowns by Pelican. Really, I watched that 30 seconds online again. He's running at him with his arms. Anybody can just pivot and get out of that takedown. No, um, you're right, 155. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I know, of course. Like, Felder, I knew it was 155. I just He seemed small to me. He looked a little bit smaller, but he's muscular. He's a very yeah. jam-packed man. Um. I Ultra like fast. him. I mean, if Felder's talking back to him and wants the fight, it will Let's be it. exciting. Let's do it. To watch. The Irish Dragon, is that Felder? I believe so. The Irish Dragon versus Bone Crusher. Do you think he should come into the song I Ain't Never Scared by, I think, the artist Bone Crusher? I ain't never scared. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't even know what he walks into. The, I, if it was Bone Crusher, you know. I'm looking at my record. I've never bet against him. Woo woo. I think I've bet against him twice already. If you go, if you went against Felder, who would you have? Just right now, uh, guessing. Guessing, I'm gonna say decision Felder, only because I feel like Felder has the experience and has gone far. And this young man, the only the thing that he lacks is decision fights that are grueling. Felder can make it a grueling fight. We don't know how he how he tests with pressure. I and actually it, think Felder could knock him out. Or submit him because I don't think he um, has been tested and the driven. Yeah. Go for he, and even if he's gone into decision fights, not exactly what you're saying. Not mm -hmm. with the pressure of Felder. Not, not with the with caliber the, of fighter yeah. of Felder as well. And so I think Felder is an underrated guy. And I, I feel agree. like on DraftKings, he would be so cheap. I would agree with that. This uh, Against the Bone Crusher. I agree. And he might even be the favorite on the card after that last I knockout. That. And everyone would underrate Felder and he yep. would be our Leslie Smith. So you're hearing this first. We're this already predicting this like way early. But I could see 100%. I agree with that 100%. Because that's just how it feels like it's going to move along. And I think... Felder will be underrated, undervalued all the way around. Unless the bookies are listening, which they probably are. And they always are. <laughs> they're going to end up putting freaking what do Felder you, as a um, Think of Musasi Weidman. Can't wait Quick. for that fight. Can't what wait do you for think that right fight. now? Musasi, got to. Got to go with Musasi. Musasi's look like a beast. I mean, the only time we've seen Musasi even look a little bit rough is when he put his face into a heel. He ducked into that heel. And then it wasn't just that. Didn't the Weidman kind of duck into the knee? Yes. yes they yes, have yes. the same ending. I, Weidman, uh, this is the thing with know. Weidman. No, what, Weidman bled everywhere. <laughs> he was the very first... He was my very first hero watching, where I'm like, this guy can never be beat. He was like, he yeah. beat... I saw Anderson, Anderson yeah, Silva that. fights. Um... But I just really think this has to be it. This is the fight. It's now or never. He doesn't have the ring rust anymore. It's shaken off. But the weird thing with Weidman is 
his last two fights have gone out very similar with stu- really weird, not, I don't want to say stupid mistakes, I'm not in there, but very un... Characteristic? Yes, mm-hmm. like, and just unfighter characteristic mistakes. Like, duck in twos and, you know, so... When we say, when I say at times, like, why are you trying a spinning kick when you look like you're not good at it and you're not doing it? And as commentators we can say wow that was the stupidest kick i'd ever seen you were winning that fight up until then then you got submitted by rockhold and we can say i told you so that you're so dumb but in the moment rockhold isn't expecting that to come either and that could have finished the fight for chris weidman regardless weidman put himself in that situation because he was trying to win he didn't throw that because he thought he was gonna fucking lose he, didn't, he doesn't duck into a knee because he thinks he's going to lose. He's trying to win the fight. And we always are very critical of the fighting style of why did you do that? Your fight IQ is so bad. It's not bad fight IQ. It's somebody just trying to win and the other guy just got there first. Do you think that could be some of the ring rust? Like you're going no, in against Yol. Because he was winning fight, two fight, rounds fight. to Yol. He was winning two rounds to Yol. He was with, so there is no ring rust there. Off. It yeah, was no ring rust. Him. Well, it wasn't off because Yol saw him changing levels to keep going for that wrestling and threw the knee. It's exactly what you do against a wrestler. I have a, do you think at all mentally having Stephen Thompson at this point that he was at in his career and he's married to your sister and now all of a sudden there's another all-star in the family when you've been the only all-star your whole life and now he's fighting for a potential title and you've lost your title and now you're one more fight away from even getting that back. Do you think mentally he will do better because Steven's lost two fights in a row and is off that streak and now he can kind of be the all-star again and regain, like, maybe that's who he is, like... I think Chris Weidman's on his way out. I don't think that he can make a resurgence. I would say ye- if there was, it's Who's against the champion Wasabi. of his weight class? It, it, Michael Bisping right I know. Now? That's what I'm saying. But I don't if think- Michael Bisping can be where he's at... <sighs> It's true, like it's a lacking division, but Musasi is probably the hardest fight Weidman could have taken I right feel now. like it's a tough division. Souza, Yoel Romero, Luke Rockhold, Weidman, Musasi. Anderson Silva. Anderson's back into the mix of things. Kev- Kel- Kelvin's jumping up. Kel- he's the one who throws. He's the <laughs> Johnny one. Johnny Hendricks looked good in his last fight at 185. Him. So I just feel like 185 yeah, is kind it's of sick. Secretly and then to I, that's, there's like a million guys that you could probably name that I yeah, do. Yeah, Evans I think's at 185 now. Which one? But so, I don't there know. Is, yeah, still... there is other guys. Um, there's some fun 85 fights coming up, actually. I feel like Strickland, if he's not at 70, I think he said 85. Versus Usman. No, what's Usman? 170? No, yeah. he's 185, and Elias is 185. Yeah. So, yeah. Usman, Strickland, Elias. Strickland is somebody who I've been watching Luke from the... Luke Yeah. Who just beat Luke Look good, too. Fucking... <laughs> Leon Edwards. 185. Yeah, and I fell off no, the wait. Edwards train Edwards just fought out wrestling. Cowboy. Yeah, but Cowboy needs to take a break, and Cowboy's at 170, not even 85. Yeah, that's what so I... So it's like, no, 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 Cowboy no, 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 like no, 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 there's many, many other fights that Leon Edwards didn't have that are going to be just as fun. 85 is looking fun. Strickland, about to be on the... Usman, we always talk about. Sean Strickland, this is for the card coming up in two weeks, coming what? up, but Sean Strickland versus... Telling you, Diamond in the Rough, people aren't talking about it, we're talking about it. Strickland I, Usman's gonna be a grind. It's gonna be Strickland's two underrated as fuck. Ultra underrated. Usman, I've made tons of money yeah. off of him. I like and, both those fighters so much. I know, and I think it's gonna be one of the first times I've ever picking against Strickland. I ha Usman will wear it's that belt. On Usman might are they in the one seventy? Usman or, might be one seventy. I don't know where yeah, I think Usman might be one seventy. I think he's one seventy. Yeah. I think Strickland's at one seventy. Either way, that fight at 170, 185, I'm going to watch that. And that's an ultra grind. Um, Usman stri- has good cardio. Everyone has always said that Tarzan, the way Strickland got his nickname, Tarzan, is because people get in there with him and he would ragdoll them around like he was the strongest Tarzan because he wrestled around with apes all the time. But he is, everybody says after they fight him, that skinny fucker is way stronger than you think. And it's true in the way sometimes he puts people into positions. You're like, 
He's muscling it using technique, but you can see that the other guy's just like, holy shit, I'm not, my hips are pinned to the ground. And Usman is just as fucking strong, has just as good a hips, and dangerous, dangerous as fuck in every position. He, yeah. Great he, top game. He's one of those all around yeah. dangerous so guys. Is, so is Strickland, though. So is I Strickland. Like this, fight. this is a fight what that. What was this song? I couldn't even tell you because yeah. I looked up. I just looked up a couple fights. When they're too far away, I know I, I don't want to be too excited. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't look because I keep thinking this weekend is gonna happen and then it doesn't. Um, I don't know if this is getting down to the end, but JJ is pretty much just saying that Rose is crazy. She's not gonna be, and when she finish, if she beats, and she's not. JJ's not being saying I will be Andrage, but she's like, if I be Andrage, uh-huh. I'll be fighting Watterson. What I absolutely love about that is that she isn't coming in as a champ in her own mind. As the way I put, I view it. Yeah, there's a mental block there. If I no, win, it's not a block. It's not a block because a champ says, "I'm a champ. I'm gonna do." And that's what I the do. old JJ. It, that's how JJ used uh-huh. to be. But I JJ to... at ATT is not the same JJ. No, now she's just like. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm fighting against elite women in here, but I gotta practice like she's a champ, cause then I'll kick her ass. Even though she doesn't tell herself that, but that's what she's doing. Well, if you that is smart because the weakest exactly. part of JJ is her ground, and the best part of Michelle Watterson is her ground. Mm-hmm. So if she's training for the one skill that she doesn't have, all the that's right, right. yeah, that's the mind. The yeah. it's the mind games, and I think that that's what she's doing because she's very mind oriented. Have you seen her water bottles that she posts? Everyone posts yeah, pictures yeah. of love it, love it, love it. And how many people are stealing that now? Well, Con- I mean, Connor. This is the Connor Floyd. Not to even touch on that today, <laughs> <laughs> but take that out of it. But I just feel like he's a representation of manifestation working and the way he lives mm-hmm. his life, the way he says he sees things, the way you know he fights for that. And to me, that manifestation is the most dangerous element for Floyd Mayweather. That's the most dangerous thing that Connor's bringing to the fight is his power of manifestation. So he you, didn't have enough time to manifest against Nate the first time. Do would you be potentially influenced by uh, some Twitter conversations you've been having with Tito Vera? Oh, Cheeto thinks Connor will win too. Yeah, he uh, tweeted at Lesbo in the Bank. Woo woo! I like Cheeto. Thank you, Cheeto. Yeah. I've always followed your career since you were on the show. I know you're a pimp living out of Florida. Uh, if you haven't seen any of Cheeto's stuff, he's fighting for his daughter and he has GoFundMe stuff. Look it up. She's a sweetheart, angel of a person. And he was rad as hell getting all emotional about him beating Brad Pitt. Like he did it classy in like a perfect. really weird way. Perfect. I love it. Exactly. It's like he beat his hero. He, it, he made me him. more of a fan, even though I was a fan already. And he came in on short notice. Yeah. Took we a, both picked him. Took a pummelin. I mean, did he know? Did we send him a card like, I hey, Chico, know. hey, do I, you know we had you as underdogs? Yeah, maybe. Maybe he looked at other stuff afterward. And Either way. Well, good luck on the next fight. You know yeah. we're going to be cheering for you, homeboy. Chito Ferra. Chito. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, the last thing. Happy birthday, DC. Don't to me!